Joining us now, Democratic Congresswoman Ilan Omar of Minnesota. The Congresswoman represents the district where both George Floyd and Dante Wright were killed by police. And she has just introduced new legislation on police accountability, which includes creating a national police misuse of force investigation board. So welcome back to the show. Let's talk specifically about your bill. How would this board, what would this board look like? How would it work? And how do you think it would address the problem of police accountability, which appears to not exist right now? I really appreciate being uh, with with both of you. Thank you for for having me. Um, the the board uh, would be uh, an eight per person board that is outside of law enforcement that is able to do independent investigations um, of shooting, police shootings, um, use of deadly force, uh, and any sort of bodily injury that occurs uh, while people are in the custody of police. Uh, they will be appointed um, by the uh, president and, and approved by uh, the Senate. Uh, and what we are hoping uh, to do is sort of turn around um, the, the statistic that currently exists where 2% um, of police that were involved in fatal shootings were arrested since 2005, um, and majority of them uh, were, not being, were not able to be held accountable. And I'm wondering, um, as moving forward during this incredibly difficult period, especially in your, your district, which has been really ground zero for um, what America has really learned about some of these police shootings and what has happened in the moments leading up to them. But I'm wondering also if there's any effort to reinforce really good policing. Uh, sure. Uh, I mean, but... You know, we have to uh, really look at um, the, the current history of the criminal justice system and realize that it is not adequate uh, enough to prosecute itself. Um, we're realizing, you know, as we put together the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, uh, that it was necessary for there to be standardized uh, police trainings um, for us to be able to, to ban certain practices to make sure that there was qualified immunity. Uh, there are just a lot of guardrails that still need to be created in order for our justice system to work on behalf of everyone. Mm -hmm. Reverend Sharpton is with us and has a question for you, Congresswoman. Rev Co Congresswoman, uh, a week ago today, I was in your district with the wake of uh, of the uh, right killing of and uh, the family there. The next day, you joined us at the funeral, and two days before that, in your district was the conviction of a police officer for the murder of George Floyd. Do you get the sense that the people in Washington? Uh, in the Senate and the Congress understand how vital this issue is right now and how uh, uh, divided the country is uh, really around the acts of policing. Uh, we have another funeral Monday I'm doing the eulogy in North Carolina. I, I, I'm asking you, do the people in Washington understand the real state of emergency that many people of color see uh, our communities and when it comes to policing. Thank you, uh, Reverend, uh, for for that question. Um, you know, you and I both hope that the people in, in Washington um, are uh, aware as acutely as you and I are just how how tragic, um, you know, these times have been for our communities and, you know, the, just the kind of brutality uh, that people are experiencing in the hands of those who have taken an oath to protect and serve our communities. When we think about public safety, it's about making sure everyone feels safe um, in, in their communities. And so, you know, although I don't feel quite comfortable saying um, that everybody understands the urgency of this moment, the urgency of getting it right on behalf of all Americans in this country, uh, we are going to continue to push them uh, and have the necessary conversations so that we get them to the point where they say yes to these pieces of legislation that we are hoping to push forward. 
Congresswoman Omar, it's Willie Geis. Great to have you on the show this morning. Thank you for being here. As you know well, when people hear your name in connection to policing, they think of the defund the police movement. They think of your comments after the murder of George Floyd, uh, where you said the Minneapolis Police Department needs to be disbanded. You know that President Biden, former President Obama, Karen Bass, Jim Clyburn, Bernie Sanders, the list goes on, have dismissed the idea of defunding the police. So let's just be clear about your vision for policing in America through this bill and, and broadly. What do you think a good Minneapolis police department, for example, would look like? Yeah, thank you, actually, for, for that question. You know, Minneapolis right now is engaged in a rigorous uh, process of trying to reimagine what public safety um, looks like for all of us. Uh, we all realize that, you know, our, our police department um, has not been an adequate uh, police department where people have full faith uh, in the functionality of that police department. Half of our homicides uh, go unsolved. Um, there have been cases reported where uh, rape, case, rape kits have been uh, destroyed. I mean, I remember witnessing my first police shooting as a teenager where Minneapolis police put, you know, three dozen bullets into a mentally ill uh, man in the middle of the street in broad daylight. Uh, and so there's a lot of work that needs to go into. And so what Minneapolis right now is doing is that they're engaging the community. Uh, we have a couple of charter amendments uh, that are being proposed uh, in November to try to think about what, um, you know, different departments uh, need to be constituted in order for there to be uh, law enforcement, people who deal with homicides, rapes, um, robberies and the such. Uh, and then where there are, you know, other resources um, for the kind of regular safety measures that the community needs. So not necessarily Congresswoman disbanded, as you said last June, but reimagined. Is that the vision? Well, reimagining uh, is is the process that they are going through. But ultimately, uh, the Minneapolis Police Department in that process would be. Uh, dismantled, and you know we will get in uh, a process of reconstructing um, different um, law enforcement.